Welcome to the Epic Vision Zone. Today's guest is an entrepreneur. She is a business coach, a soul therapist, a celebrity makeup artist, and an online educator. She has worked with Fortune 500 companies, stars like Elizabeth Taylor, Nicole Kidman, Elle McPherson, and many more. Her talent as a makeup artist has led her to doing the makeup for the Olympics in Japan, and the President of the United States. She became a full-time crew member on the Drew Carey Show, where she created the famous makeup look for the character Mimi. Looking to find substance in her work and life, she began to explore the philosophies and the origins of cosmetics. That has led her to building a system in psychology that integrates beauty, wellness, and success coaching. Today, her biggest passion is guiding women entrepreneurs to attract their dreams and reinvent themselves while exploring who they are on the inside so that they can express themselves authentically on the outside. I love that. Over the years, she has honed her skills as a visionary, a leader, teacher, and mentor for women, helping them to uncover their best image and life. Welcome, Laura Schakowsky. Thank you. I appreciate you having me today. You're very welcome. And I think I may have put the cow in the ousty. <laughs> We're talking about her name. So pronounce your name correctly for our audience. Laura Shikoski. Shikoski. There you go. Thank you so much. Coming from the world of Hollywood and celebrities, how does it feel to be the star in your own story, Laura? Well, it's funny. It's like you... You, you hit the ground running and you're trying to build this, this career and then you finally get to that, that moment where you realize that you've made it. And the only way that you actually really know is because other people are telling you. Mm. It's, it's interesting. It's like, you know, you, you pick up a magazine and the magazine, you know, has articles that you've, you've been a part of and been interviewed for, um, you know, like, TV guide is listing whatever you're working on as the, the top, top show, you know, in the United States. And, it, you know, the ratings are off the charts. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, wow, I'm, I'm just doing what I've always done. But this particular uh, experience has a lot more. Yeah, so that's interesting that it takes sometimes the outsiders to see your success. I, I find that very interesting. So you were 24 years old when you decided to move to Hollywood. Were you intimidated by such a big move or was it something that your heart just said, do it, this is going to be exciting? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I had gotten to a point in my career where it, did, it was like I was doing all of this work and it was real edgy and I had done a lot of research to create these really unique styles. Um, but the people that I was working with didn't have an edgy look. They were turning everything that I was doing into a real commercial and catalog you know, style, mm -hmm. almost corporate looking. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like if I ever really want to make it big, I'm going to have to go to a bigger city. I'm going to have to work with the best of the best and the known names and put myself in an environment where I can, you know, shine and um, I could see where my potential is. And so I had to, to think about it. Did I want to go to LA or did I want to go to New York? And, um, and suddenly it was like, LA was it because that's what was showing up in my life, different TV shows from LA. And so um, a friend of mine said, Lori, you need to watch the movie, The Fountainhead by Ann Ryan, the old movie. And I said, okay. And I watched that movie and it was like something just clicked. It was like, after that, I said, I've got to do it. If I don't do it now, when I'm young, I'll never do it. And then I'll never see what I'm really truly capable of. So once I made that decision, it was like a very short period of time, like 60 days after I was wow. driving in the car to LA. Yeah, so. Very decisive, but you had the intuition at a very young age to realize that where you were was not going to provide you with the environment to grow. So 
you you had very intuitive insight even at a young age when you think of it because a lot of individuals at 24 a lot of them are still in school um and and some of them are really trying to find what it is that they they love or what it is they want to do but at that age you said if i want to grow i know i have to move from here so then it must have been exciting for you yes i mean i think part of it is that i've always been a big thinker and when I first started as, as a makeup artist at 19, you know, I set a goal. I said, you know what? Uh, I will know that I've reached the pinnacle of success once I have, you know, gotten a call to do makeup on the President of the United States. Now, why I picked an old man, you know, or an older woman as my, as my landmark at that time was completely subconscious. Um, but at that time, what I didn't realize was that I really wanted to become a leader. Mm. And so that's why I chose to do makeup on the president as, as my line in the sand before I would take, you know, that next step to bring everything up to the next level. Wow. So there you go. Yeah. The art of attraction. It, yes. it, it happens. Yeah. Really. It's, it's, it, here we are in real life and there's, proof that that it can you put the goal out there you put the thought out there you put the intention and here you are it took time but it came to be a real at reality well when you yeah. say makeup is the expression of who you are in your life what do you mean by that you say who you are in your life now because we always change so just mm -hmm. give us some insight into that thought well it's like as our mindset changes um, it's like we start to draw people into our life that is, that's a complete match to where we are in our head, you know, and so everything in our life from the people we draw in to the way we even present ourselves is always a match for, um, for our mindset. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like the colors that you're drawn to, um, the, your personal style, your, the conversations in your head. I mean, a lot of times you'll be drawn to certain people or meet certain people and not know why. But as soon as you start to actually have a conversation with them and they tell you what's really going on in their life, you realize that you're really in the same place. It just looks different on the surface. And right. so does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Because you're drawn to certain things at different times in your life. So depending on what that might be, you you change your look, you, you know, you, you feel different about certain aspects of your appearance. So yes, it makes complete sense to me. Um, you mentioned that our external and our internal worlds are mirrors. Tell us what that means. So you asked me about like, you know, how is life a mirror, you know, and uh, basically, um, you know, I, I have to tell you a story to answer that question, really. Sure, I love stories. Um, I read this book years ago called uh, Creative Visualization from Shakti Gwain. I don't know if you remember that book. But there was a, the concept of mirroring was introduced to me um, in that book. And they basically said, you know, to, if you really want to see yourself, look at what it is that you see in other people. And there was an exercise where you write down all the people in your life and you write the good things and you write the things that you don't, that you don't necessarily like, you know? And then they said, now replace that with your own name. I am. And then all of the characteristics that you noticed in someone else. And she said, when you do that, you can see your own blind spots because everybody is a mirror of you cleverly disguised as somebody else, you know? And so the, the whole philosophy in that is that we are literally projecting all of our thoughts onto the world, kind of like a movie. And then we attract different scenarios and different people and play out those parts to teach us something about ourselves, whether it's a blind spot or whether it's um, something that we like about ourselves. But it doesn't matter. That whole point of view will help us uh, really see and learn, you know, and develop our character even more. 
Yeah, that's a great exercise to see what you like in others and make a note of it. And that's what you're attracted to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes though, we do bring in those people that we think we're attracted to, but they become energy vampires. So we can... Well, it's both the, the dark and the light side, right? It's right. like what we, what we see in somebody else that we don't like actually is a lesson too because of our dual nature so you know the people that that we're resisting are actually the ones that can be our greatest teachers yes that's true that's so um, that's very I, I love that that was that was a great uh, way to unfold that um i i got a lot out of that thank you so much well, awesome. you you've seen firsthand how makeup can be a powerful character tool. And you believe that it is also a top brand essential that every woman needs. Let's delve into that a little because I completely agree with you, uh, but I'd like to hear it how, as a makeup artist, how you see that that can be a brand essential. Well, you know, it's like, I, when you ask that question, I pull from my experiences from working with uh, photographers. And you know, when a photographer comes to you and they say, they say, I want the makeup to look, and then they describe a feeling. They don't ever describe a certain look. You know, they don't say, I want brown eyeshadow, I want this color of lip, you know, I want this style. They always say something like, um, I want it to look elegant. I want it to look sexy. I don't want it to be too strong here or too light here, you know, as far as the, they describe the energy behind it, the mood. And in essence, what they're doing is they're describing the brand itself. They're describing what the person who is the, uh, going to purchase that, that particular brand of clothing, who they really are and what they will be drawn to. So basically what happens is, is that as a makeup artist, we get on the wavelength of a person, of a, a, a photographer who's basically describing the brand and, the, and the, um, the, the customer, what the customer wants to feel and how they want to express themselves. And then as a makeup artist, our job is to get on that wavelength and to portray that feeling. You know, whether it's through the makeup, through the conversation that's had with the person, um, all of it. And so as a result, uh, people want to end up buying those clothes. Well, that's branding, you know. And so in everyday life, we do that. We go to our closet and we say, what is our mood for the day? Um, what are the colors that we're drawn to? And we literally create ourselves as a brand, whether it's intentional or unintentional. We're telling the world something about how we feel about ourselves each and every day. So right. as an yes, yeah, so as an entrepreneur, it's even more important because you are your brand when you show up. Right, absolutely. And because now we have the lens of the camera everywhere like especially today with the internet and the, you know, the, the streaming and, you know, whether it's your iPhone or whether it's, it's a camera on your computer or whatever, we're always in front of a camera. So yes, I think it's, it's very vital that those who want to be aware of what they're branding, that they should really be aware of not only what they're wearing, but how their makeup is as well. Because you said something very interesting in our co earlier conversation, you said makeup isn't a cover up. It's an expression of who you are and your brand is who you are. So therein lies the circle. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Now, when, when I'm doing makeup, for example, for a film or a TV show, it is a whole different ball game because in that perspective, they're giving me a script. Mm. And they're telling me this is the story of that character. This is what the character is going through in their life. You know, it's all drama, right? Yeah. But from that emerges an image of what the hair and the makeup looks like that's a fit for the story. So it's, that's another point of view of how we can create our look and our image based on the story we're either telling ourselves mm -hmm. or we want to create in our life. So there, that's when makeup and hair and wardrobe all become a generative force 
to attract success. Mm, I love the way you put that, a generative force. That's really powerful. Yeah. Take a note of that. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That, that is, that, that's a really, really powerful way to put that, that resonate, that will resonate with people. Makeup and clothing are a generative force of how you want to move forward in life or whatever it is that you're doing. Yes. Very yes. powerful. I, I also believe that you know, we truly are, uh, we're like actors in our own life. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we can use Hollywood as an inspiration, but we are the lead actors in our life. We're, we're writing the script of our life. Uh, we're directing the flow of it. We're producing the show of it. I mean, and so if we have that much power, that much creative, uh, that much creative force to be able to use and to generate our life, then why not use it in a way that's going to make a difference for people? And so Absolutely. It, it takes makeup to a whole other level when you start to look at it that way. So you yeah. have an interesting story that you told, and I believe that it has to do with people showing up in our lives and why they do. And that's something that you believe in. Um, share with our audience the story that you discovered that you you shared with me and what you discovered because I think it is really not only fun but really interesting. So I mean I I truly believe that the people that show up in our life are there to teach us something. And, you know, it's, it's like no matter if it's everyday life or whether I've, you know, worked with a celebrity and they're, you know, the, it, the energy is just so intense with them. You know, it's like they're carrying the world with them. And to be in their personal space, you catch a glimpse of what that looks like, like and feels like. Mm -hmm. um, but what I find is that, um, it, you know, it really doesn't, you know, it's like we have these visions of what we think that success is going to bring us. You know, it's like we think it's going to bring us freedom and uh, we're going to make all this money and we're going to be able to buy what we want to buy and travel where we want to travel to. And all of that comes with success. But what I have found with a lot of the people that I've worked with is that, um, that everything really truly amplifies with fame. So if you start out happy and you have, then you have success on top of it, which is really the icing on the cake, then you're going to feel more of that. Mm -hmm. If you have, you know, the past that is not really complete and you think that, that the money and the fame are going to get, you know, be the, the solution to that problem, that's not necessarily the case. It's going to only amplify with fame, and but it's going to be in front of the world. Mm. Um, a lot of the the actors and actresses that I've met actually use acting as a healing tool to be able to deal with their emotions and their feelings and to put them on loudspeakers so that they can experience mm. transformation. So, wow, That's uh, interesting. A lot of people don't know that, um, you know, but what, what happens is, is that as they start to shift and change and, uh, and to look at things differently, they actually start to attract different roles that they play in their life instead of getting stuck in a mold. Mm. And so in, in how that relates to uh, everyday people in our lives, uh, we, we have that same exact experience uh, where we start to have the groundhog day experience of like, oh my God, I thought I learned that lesson already, but right. here it is. I'm drawing these people back into my life to have the same lesson over and over again. And so it, what I would say about success is that, uh, that, at a certain level, you have to go deep inside of yourself to kind of do an inner, like a soul, I call it a soul cleansing, where you start to break the patterns and habits and that no longer serve you and redefine who you are and who you want to be. And that becomes a powerful transformational experience. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. You're right. It does become a powerful transformation. But the fact that you said some actors actually use the roles that they play as a 
transformational tool, I could see that now. That puts it in a whole different light because, you know, they're going through all kinds of emotions depending on the role, uh, you know, whether it's, it's happiness or sadness. And if they're really in tune with that and using it to help them transform some of the issues that they have, I could see how powerful that would be. That would, that, they're basically getting coaching lessons while they're acting, but they're doing it for themselves. Yes. That's amazing. Wow. wow. That's, that's really, I love that. It's in the more authentic they are. Yes. The more yes. it's celebrated by other people because other people can look at them, you know, like the audience can look mm -hmm. at them. And go, I can really identify with that. Yes, I can feel it. Yes. I can feel it. I can identify with it. And this is what someone else would do in this situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it, it becomes a, a, an opportunity to see through somebody else's eyes, you know? Yes. Uh, we all have a story inside of us and yeah, I took a course years ago and, and they said, now I want you to write down what that lesson is, that very, that challenging lesson in your life. Uh, the thing that, that just rules you, you know, and you experience it over and over again. And they said, write this story down on Hollywood style. I mean, just turn up the volume. Mm. And then they said, okay, great. You were really enrolled in the story. Um, now what I want you to do is I want you to read it out loud to somebody else and then do it again and then do it again and mm -hmm. then do it again. And you're like, really? I mean, that <laughs> took a lot of energy <laughs> and now do it again oh, until no. it doesn't have any energy to it. And what I noticed in that exercise is that when you do that, that you start to realize that it's just a story that the choices that we've made were made up. They were, they were chosen generally at a very, very young age and we're living our life like it's the truth over and over again until we realize we have the power to change the course of our life by changing the story. It's, it's as simple as that, but yet it's so profound when you, mm -hmm. can, you can see it like as an audience looking at a movie script going, wow. Right wow, now I know what to do differently. Yes. Boy, you've really learned a lot being in Hollywood. <laughs> I, have to, I have to give it to you, Laura. You are amazing. So I'm going to move on because I know you are an avid researcher and student. You love to learn. And you, you took it upon yourself to uncover the reasons why the ancient civilizations use makeup. And in the process, you discover something really fascinating about the whole world of cosmetics. Just share a little bit about that with our audience. Well, it was interesting because I started to, the more I started going deeper into transformation of my own personal life, uh, the more I started focusing on his, the history of makeup. It was a, it was, it was a parallel thing. And I, I would read all these books about makeup and what people did and that sort of thing, but they wouldn't get down to the depth of like why people really wore makeup. Like what was it really all about? And so I started going, I go, I bet, you know, the people in the ancient world and the tribal world, those are the guys that started it all in the first place. I wonder what their philosophies were. And so, um, I was like, how am I going to find that information? I had no idea where to look. You know, it's like you go to a library and there's thousands of books, but you just want to know that one thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's when I asked a question, uh, is makeup a mask that covers up who we are or an outlet of creativity? And that is when the Drew Carey show showed up and I ended up doing makeup on the character of Mimi. Well, Mimi's makeup looks very, very similar to Cleopatra. And so as a practice of, of makeup, I was practicing it on myself to get my timing down. And I was like, I just, I, I looked in the mirror one day and I said, why did the Egyptians wear makeup the way that they did? And so the first thing that popped into my mind was, oh, wow they wore blue on the top lid 
and green on the bottom, you know, lapis lazuli on the top, you know, like a ground up pigment of, right. of like a rock, uh, malachite on the bottom, which is green. And I was like, wait a minute, that's, that represented heaven and earth. It's almost like you just have to sit there in the mirror and be present to a look and then listen. And then I was like, oh, what? Well, wait a minute. I stepped back and I was like, that looks like a peacock feather. You know, what, it, what do peacocks represent? And they represent the dance of life because the male dances around the female in a mating call. So I was like, oh, makeup is all about procreation. Then I stepped back again and I said, no, wait a minute, that's the eye of Horus. So they were trying to bring out their, I guess, uh, the God and the goddess side of them, the feminine, the most powerful feminine and masculine characteristics and unify them so that there was complete alignment. And so then they could remember who they were and be able to express it. Now, the one thing I forgot to say is that when I saw that the, the makeup represented heavens and earth and the eyes represent the windows of the soul, mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, makeup truly is an expression of the soul's journey through life. It's the expression of our hearts being portrayed as a character, just like in a movie. And then we act it all out to learn something. And so it was probably one of the most profound moments because I saw what I was really doing and what the origins, were, you know, were really all about. It was so much deeper. It was a spiritual experience. Mm. So, boy, I get really passionate about. I know, that. but you <laughs> you put you look at makeup at a whole different level. Like it's like wow, that. But the, that's why I wanted you to share this because. I love the passion that you have for your profession. And uh, I, th I think that's one of the reasons that you are successful. You know, the summit is passion to profits, but the fuel is your purpose, which we'll delve into actually in our next question, because um, that really is leading into what it is that your your purpose your, your purpose is, or at least what I believe you found your purpose is. And so you say that one of the titles that you have is soul therapist. And now I can see completely full circle how you came to that. But tell us about that title and what that entails. Soul therapist. I'm I'm very interested in knowing. <laughs> well once I finished studying all of the information from the ancient traditions and I, I learned all about it through yoga and the shock Kundalini yoga and the chakras, which really taught me how to ask a question, clear my energy through yoga and meditation. And the answer would appear. I just kept going deeper and deeper. Uh, and I started asking more questions about, well, why did tribes wear makeup? And I'll link that to soul therapy in a second, because basically getting into the minds and the hearts and the perspective of tribes and what they thought about was like, well, why did they wear makeup? So I asked that question and I found myself surrounded by, uh, invited to actually a group uh, that was a weekend retreat where they were bringing shamans in from all over the world. Now we're talking Native American, Ecuador, uh, Amazon. I mean, some of these people didn't even have clothes to get on the airplane, mm. but they had a calling. And that calling was to come to the United States to uh, help people reconnect to their soul. They said, you know, the people, uh, the people who are, our, our, uh, you know, who were our kids, and the younger generations, they want all the material things, but they have this disconnection to their soul. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to be able to, uh, to teach, you know, get our teachings out to the community. Um, well, when that happened, that is when I realized that the work that I really wanted to do at a deep heart level was soul retrieval work. And soul retrieval work is when somebody has gone through uh, a trauma in their life and it's like in spiritual terms, their soul fragments. And it doesn't matter how much 
uh, therapy that they do, they still feel this sense of incompletion. And so by learning from these shamans and actually having a teacher that was a shaman in Beverly Hills, going to her every week for a year and a half for training, she taught me how to get all those fragments and to pull them back into the spirit of a person so that they have a sense of being whole and complete from the past. So I bring all of the pieces back into the soul. And what happens is, is that a person will feel this sense of wholeness and completion from the past, and they're able to be more present in their life. And when you're present to your life, you're present to your gifts in that, in that transformational journey. That creates a more authentic expression. And so it's like all of the transformational work you do is really more heart-centered work. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a soul therapist, which is what I call it, I pull from my toolbox of about eight different things from face reading to chakra balancing to, uh, you know, to soul retrieval, to taking back your power, to astrology, like all these different types of healing modalities that I've learned over the years. And I've kind of merged them together for soul therapy so that people can remember the truth of who they are and get their power back so that they can be inspired and be able to express themselves in, in all sorts of ways. Wow. Not, and not just makeup, right? Not just yes. make wardrobe, but like in life and the things that they're passionate about sharing with the world. Yes, ab absolutely. Well, that was a great explanation. Um, I wanted to ask you now, as entrepreneurs, we're always looking for that unique offer. We're always looking for the gap where you hear people saying you have to be different outside of the box. I love how I, I've been talking to a number of entrepreneurs and I love how they've been taking what they've learned and their experiences and are transforming them like you have into doing work that they love. So you've transitioned completely from taking the makeup and so on and so forth into a coaching business. And I know you've spoken a little bit on the soul therapy, uh, but what I'd like to do is how does that encompass your, not your program necessarily, but you've taken that and you've, uh, you're taking a, 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 a trade that you have, an experience and a talent and a gift and now you've expanded it into something more. So how uh, did, I mean, I know it's kind of morphed because you've said some of that story, but just give us a little bit more to unpack that for entrepreneurs who are listening, because I know everyone comes to the table with experience. They all, we all come to the table with a past and we, whether we know it or not, a lot of what we've learned in the past is what's going to help us move forward in the future and using those tidbits along the way. Absolutely. Um, I think that, that really it, everybody has a dream and whether that they're living that dream and they want to scale up or they want to start something completely new. Maybe, maybe they have a job, for example, uh, that they, they love, they love that job, but it's not really giving them full self-expression. Uh, so there's a dream there that needs to be listen to and, and, and to be grounded so that they, you know, the entrepreneurs can take action, right? So, you know, that all goes back to the power of intention. Uh, to be able to manifest, you've got to be really clear about what it is that you want. And so, one of the things that I really help people with is getting, get grounded first in what you want and be clear about it. And I'll give you an example of that. When I said in the very beginning of a, as a makeup artist that I wanted to get a call to do makeup on the president, you know, there was a, a phone call that came through. Hey, Lori, are you, a, or, Lori's my nickname. Okay. <laughs> so let me change that. Hey, Laura, um, are you available on Thursday? You know, that was a Dr. Phil show calling me. We're doing an interview with George Bush and Dr. Phil. My response was, oh my gosh, like I didn't think I was ever going to get that phone call. And it just came so randomly, it felt like, even though it really wasn't. And so I said, yes. And then two days later, they called me and 
they said, Lori, we're canceling, Laura, we're canceling that shoot. Mm. They call, let me rephrase that. They're, they called me and they said, we're canceling that shoot. And I was like, no, mm. it was like, it was like a, a having a, you know, like the, the finish line right there. Mm -hmm. And I was right there. And then it disappeared until I realized that at 19, I said, I will take my life to the next level when I get a phone call to do makeup on the president. I didn't say I wanted to do makeup on the president, right? Mm -hmm. So I actually manifested exactly what I said. So I said, no, no, no. I, I want to have done makeup on the president. Boom. Trump mm -hmm. wins the election. I had already done his makeup on the Drew Carey show. He was a guest. <laughs> I, wow, like, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, you were the guest on there. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And so it was like the joke was on me. So I always start every entrepreneur on their journey with being so specific because every word creates a world that you live into. And so I always start there. And then I go deeper into a, uh, a meditation to get clear from every perspective and every level and that is what's next and then mm -hmm. after that comes a soul cleansing where you start to really lay the foundation of your environment and your life for something big that's to come and it's really gets you settled into what your commitment is to that dream because there's a lot of people out there that go yes i want something massive but they aren't willing to make any changes in their life. They want to do the same thing, but get different results, which is, it's not going to happen. So that process gives them a way of inching into that uh, and seeing how they can start shifting their life, which ultimately takes them into my core work, which is the reinvention process of going, okay, now you know you have the capability of creating change now let's create a Hollywood success story, something that you're really, really inspired by. And let's put it in time. And then let's use all of the cycles of astrology as a foundation to go, okay, when this time of year comes around, this is the focus of the energy. Kind of like what I was describing about a photographer saying, get on my wavelength and start portraying a look. This is like, mm. get on my wavelength and start generating your life from that. Mm -hmm. So it becomes really powerful because over time, you start to feel so different. It's only natural to start to create a new brand and a new image and possibly a coaching business for them as a result of going, wow, I want to share my transformation with other people. So the one thing that is really, really unique about my programs, as well as the inspiration that comes along the way, uh, is that no matter if it's coaching, no matter if it's a healing session, no matter if it's, it's one of the online programs, um, I have created uh, an aromatherapy blend, uh, aromatherapy line actually, with teas that are all based on the chakra system. And if you're unfamiliar with the chakras, uh, the chakras go back to yoga, which are all about the, there's like seven different energy centers. I look at all of those as different wavelengths. So when you use different essential oils mixed together with the intention of getting on those wavelengths to unblock energy, then you start to, you start to see that aromatherapy is not just something that smells good. It's something that can be used as an amplifier to see inside of ourselves that can actually fuel the process of success. So um, I use each of these with uh, all of the different programs to get down into the spirit of what it is that you're really going through. Because a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. I mean, I'm inspired to create something big. I have no idea what it is. Well, when you hold the scent underneath your nose and at first it smells good, and then all of a sudden they, they're, they find themselves going straight to their heart. Mm -hmm. and, and now their heart is telling them what it is that will create fulfillment. Then all of a sudden 
it's a whole different dynamic where you smell the scent and you're taken back to the experience, taken back to the words that you've said that you want to uh, create in your life. Mm. Those sound wonderful. Well, we'll have information about that on, on the links because yeah, that sounds like something everyone could use for sure. Um, speaking of, well, just going back a little bit, you were referring to writing your own Hollywood story. And you did mention to me a question that I thought was fascinating because I love creativity as well. You lead people with a question that who is your avatar? So, and you were saying that that helps to unblock us, to move us forward. And of course, a lot of us entrepreneurs and or women who are in a career and thinking of pivoting right now in their life, I think this question could be something very valuable. So maybe delve into that a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I'd like to say, you know, it, it, it's like every marketer will always, always talk to entrepreneurs and they will always say to them, who is your avatar? And the first thing you think is, I have no idea. I just want to make a difference. I just want to write a book. But the reality is, is that we're always talking to someone. And that avatar is really, it's us cleverly disguised as somebody else. I mean, so we're, we're learning and we're teaching the things that we teach others. Um, you know, I find that, that the deeper that you get into understanding avatars, the more you start to really study roles, like archetypal roles. Mm. And uh, the archetypal roles are like the roles that we go through and learn throughout, throughout the year. So there's, there's these extremes in these, in these types of archetypes. For example, we are learning how to become in some cycles, master communicators. We're learning how to listen in some cycles. Well, those are extreme opposites, right? Mm -hmm. But when we learn how to find a balance within those, that becomes the depiction of our roles and the character building that we go through, which then helps us get into the world of what an avatar wants and needs. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So you're, you're building, for lack of a better word, it's not really a character though. No. An no. avatar, you said, is an archetype. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when you ask someone that, then you, you dive into unpacking it. And it's not just a character. So what I would say uh, for entrepreneurs to be able to really discover who their avatar is, is to do a meditation. Mm -hmm. And just to imagine that a, a someone that they really, really want to talk to. Imagine them coming to them in a meditative form saying, this is what I want. This is what I need. So they have to be able to bring it outside of them, kind of like what we were talking about, about projecting a Hollywood movie and really look at uh, your ideal customer, for example, as a person. And you would be amazed at when you start asking them all of the questions that you need to know yourself about your business, then all of those intuit intuitive bursts start to come and then it becomes really, really easy. And then you're, you're just having a conversation. It's an internal dialogue, but you're, you're having a conversation that's saying, you know, what do you like to do? Where do you like to go? Um, what kind of clothes do you like? You know, and it's, it, it's kind of funny because in a way you're asking the questions uh, that you would to a person that you don't even know yet. But then you start to go, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's and that's right. where the whole mirroring thing comes so in. So that, that would be a good way to frame it is it just let your imagination go. Don't get rooted in, well, what do I like? It's just pretend, you know, like that's the thing. Yeah. We, get, we get stuck in the reality of who we are now uh, as opposed to playing you know yes. because yes. once when we let that go like you talk to a, a child and you know you ask them about you know who are they trying to be because they're running around and maybe playing a character or a character or an avatar and they, they'll just ramble off a whole bunch of things they have you know there's no stopping their imagination but as we get older we we get 
We want everything to, to come out right. We want it to be perfect. We want it to sound exactly as if, you know, that has to be that way and it can't be this way because now I'm a responsible adult. You know, it's, it's like, yeah, no, let's just go play. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, when I first started uh, makeup, you know, my makeup mentor told me one thing. She said, when you want to take on a new role in life, start saying every single day, I am, and then whatever that role is, and do it over and over again. And everywhere you go, tell people that you are that role. And at first, it feels fake. It feels fake. Mm -hmm. And then when you get more and more comfortable with it and have a dialogue around it, then it starts to open up conversations. Then it starts to open up opportunities. And then you start to really step into uh, that experience as if, and own it. Right. Uh, and, you know, and again, we talk about languaging. It's like the, the language that you speak, you know, it's like you talk to any kind of celebrity, they already are that character. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, when doing makeup on, on a celebrity, when they're in character, they say, don't call me by my name, call me by my character. Mm. Because it jolts them out of the mindset of who they're generating themselves to be. Right. And we can use that as a tool ourselves. You know, whether we're, right. talk, whether we're stepping into that mindset of, of, of becoming something new, or if we're trying to figure out who, who is our customer, you know, and we're having mm -hmm. to do that inner reflective work and then finding people that are, that, that have those same qualities or interests. So as an entrepreneur, what are some of the things that you really enjoy about being your own boss? The thing I love about being my own boss is that I get to choose what I do every single day. I choose the clients that I work with. I choose the uh, schedule I want to have. Um, I choose when I'm going to take off work and when I'm going to, when I'm going to, you know, to uh, going on vacation. Um, it's, it's like there's this, there's so much freedom around being able to do what it is that you really want to do. When you're working for somebody else, uh, you have to be there at a specific time. Uh, you may have to wear certain types of clothes. Um, you, you are, it's like the role that you are gets dictated by someone else's environment. Mm -hmm. When you're an entrepreneur, everything gets completely flipped. Now, there's beauty in both, right? Because if you're working for somebody and you're, you have a lot of structures set up, so you don't have the problem of, oh, I forgot to eat lunch because I got so, cre I got in a creative project and I totally lost track of time. Mm -hmm. or, <laughs> or you get in the hole, the rabbit hole where you start researching something and yes, it's not, it's now dark outside and you're still on the same subject. <laughs> yes. yes. Been so, there, done that. <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's like when you're, when you're in a structured environment, it teaches you how to be structured. So right. there's beauty in that to be able to bring it into the entrepreneurial world where you're like, nobody's going to give me the structure. I have to build it in myself. Right. And so you've got this flood of creativity that has to be structured. Um, and so to be able to be successful as an entrepreneur, you have to be in touch with your rhythm. Uh, you have to be able to, um, you know, have your well-being taken care of. I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs come to me and say, you know what? It's not about, um, you know, it's like I, I worked and worked and worked and I got to a point where I had so much money. Then I realized, oh, I've made it big. But then they started having a problem with maybe their health because the one thing that they left out was they forgot to get their massages, to step away, to work, you know, work out, to eat healthy, to take care of themselves before they take care of the world. Right. So there's always something that we're putting in to, uh, to have success, not just be in our, our business, but in all areas of our life. Because if it, it's like, 
it has to all work to have that sense of happiness and fulfillment everywhere. Yes, you're right. It does. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely does. Now, I can't let you go without asking you this because I know that there's probably everyone watching would love to have get from you some tips and tricks to be camera ready and to be able to put our best face forward because this is the new normal and uh, we would love to get some advice from a (laughs) professional on what makeup we should or maybe should not or just some general tips. Yeah, Uh, so uh, as far as being on camera, you're gonna wanna make sure that your makeup is at least two shades darker than everyday makeup. And that's Mm -hmm. just because of the lighting. Uh, The lighting will wash your skin tone down. Um, You're also gonna wanna make sure that you're powdered. And you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't wanna powder because it makes me look old or whatever. But the reality is, is that you need to look completely matte on camera because it just looks more polished and professional. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing is, is that eyelashes are a must for camera. Mm -hmm. I mean, every celebrity wears them um, so that they can wear less eyeshadow and have a, uh, have their eyes still pop. But what if you're uncomfortable with eyelashes? Like I've seen uh, celebrities and talk show hosts and they, they have the fake eyelashes, but, it really does not do them any favors because I am so distracted by them blinking and, you know, having their, you could tell they're completely irritated and I'm, I'm, it's, I'm totally distracted by it. And I keep saying, why are you wearing those things? It's not doing you any favors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's hilarious. Well, you know what? It's because out of the glamor, you know, it's, it's all about the glamor and, you know, and, a lot of times the lights will wash all of our features out. Ah, okay. So, so but, but if you're really uncomfortable with them, maybe don't wear them. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I just know that with every, um, everybody that I ever make up, they always want lashes. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's like you're putting on your face for the world. You're putting on your glamour. This is distinctly different from who you are in your everyday life. Right. You know? Uh, so you have to think about it as on camera, you're creating a persona, Mm -hmm. right? It's like, if you were to go to a photo shoot and a wardrobe stylist pulled a bunch of clothes for you, you wouldn't say, I would wear this and I wouldn't wear that. You would say, my role as an entrepreneur would do this and they would do that which is distinctly different from what you would do in your own personal life. And makeup is the same exact way. Okay, so where, sorry, go ahead. It's a mindset. It's a mindset, yeah. So the tip, wear shades darker, a couple of shades darker because you get washed out. You definitely want powder because you want it to look matte and you want eyelashes because you want your features to pop on camera. Now, yeah. what, what about lipstick? And as far as lipstick goes, uh, you just want to wear something uh, kind of neutral. Uh, if you notice, a lot of people wear uh, lipsticks that are a little bit more salmon color to peachy, uh, just because the lighting starts to change the makeup. So if mm. you do something that's pink, it's going to make it look even pinker mm. on camera. Okay. Uh, it, it'll look your light, your your pretty light pink will look like it's hot pink on camera. Oh boy. Okay. So you want to go more towards the warm tones. Clothing wise, you're going to want to stay uh, solid colors, mm-hmm. mainly solid colors. Don't you know? Try to stay away from patterns. Anything that that has lines in it, you know, because they start to moire. Oh, and lastly, about the makeup. The weight of the blush that you put on your face will create your overall look to be heavy or lighter. Mm. So the lighter your blush, the more natural the makeup. The heavier your blush, the more, uh, the the heavier the makeup looks overall. Um, As far as hair goes, you wanna make sure that like, see there's no holes Mm. in the hair and it may feel like, God, that looks so stiff, but, 
look at news anchors. You know, they don't they don't have wild hairs, anything that could cause a distraction, distraction. from their message. Right, right. So take a look at yourself before you turn it on, basically. Yeah. yeah. And see for those those little tweaks that you can make because you're right. The, those things do. I've I've noticed if I'm watching someone on camera, and they have something of that nature, I'm completely distracted. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, why are is that person not no? And then always check your teeth. Oh yeah, That's always true. check your teeth right before you get started. Oh my gosh, that would be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're smiling to millions of people, and then you've got lipstick on your teeth. That's oh. Yeah, see, you know, so it's like on camera, you have to suddenly be so conscious of everything that, that normally, normally in everyday life doesn't really matter yeah. on camera is so amplified. Yes, you're right. It's, it's very amplified. It makes for a whole different world as we know. Yes. <laughs> for sure. So Laura, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience, some exciting projects that you're working on and just let them know where that they, they can find you. And of course, we'll have all of those links on your bio in the speaker pages. Uh, yes, you can reach me uh, at laurashikoski.net. Uh, there you can find out about, you can set up coaching sessions with me, uh, get your chakras balanced, uh, do soul retrieval work, uh, even get a face reading, which is really, really fun. Um, or even uh, create your own Hollywood success story and uh, be guided every single month to be able to generate it and have accountability around it. Um, so I'm offering all of, of my coaching sessions right now. You can also get on my email list for my upcoming courses uh, through uh, wildfireentrepreneurs.com. Uh, and that's really where you can connect with me uh, to find out what's new and what's exciting and how um, all of the tools that I have can really help you uh, bring your dreams to life and, and reinvent yourself. Well, that's wonderful. Now, before we go, I have a couple of questions that I ask of every guest and you may find it lots of fun because it's really about using our imagination because we are here at the Epic Vision Zone. So the first question that I have is, if your life were an epic story, what would the title be? If my life were an epic story, what would the title be? That is a great question. I thought you'd ask me who I would have play me. No, <laughs> <the movie>. no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one too, but. Oh my gosh, no. I would say, uh, Oh, wow. I would say Firefly. Oh, I like it. I, like I would it. say Firefly because a fire, because Firefly is where it just, to me, it represents these, um, these inspirations that come and it just kind of ignites everything. I like it. I you like know, it. They always are kind of going off, you know, <laughs> into Great. So what name would you give your character in your epic story? Oh, well, hmm. what name? I would, you know, I would probably say Sandra because, you know, it all, you know, my favorite actress is Sandra Bullock. Hmm. Love her. I've never met her before, but I just love her. So probably Sandra. Okay. And how would you characterize your epic life? My epic life would be that you, are you wondering about the transformation, the story of transformation? No, just if you were living in your epic story, what in a couple of sentences would be, what would your life be like? Um, so the answer to that is, that my epic life is making a difference in millions of people's lives to being able to transform and having one conversation that just completely alters the course of other people's lives puts them on their path and allows them to just just fully come alive mm -hmm. be fully fulfilled and happy and, and having all of the tools to do that 
I would say that's fulfilling. You know, it's, I can't even tell you when people come to me after one thing is said and they say, wow, that one thing that you said to me just completely changed my life and I'll never forget Mm. it. It's like, that's what really makes all of this work Mm -hmm. valuable and worthwhile. Making a difference. It's the whole reason I do it. It's it's happiness and joy into people's lives. Well, the last question then is, if you had an epic superpower, what would it be and why? Um, Let's see. My epic superpower is to bring magic into people's life and to open them up. So I would say the superpower is to have, you know, a five minute conversation with somebody where I could grant their wishes, you know, like a fairy godmother almost. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Where they say, I want this wish to happen in my life. And I'm like, wish granted. And through that experience, like everything that they ever wanted is possible. So you would be able to grant wishes would be your superpower. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. And I, for coming on the show and teaching us about the power of wearing our beauty from the inside out. And Laura and I would love to hear from you. So go on over to the Facebook page and write a comment. Tell us what your epic takeaway was from this conversation. And remember, this is where you imagine, create, and build a life and business doing what you love. Until next time, this is the Epic Vision Zone.